Well, hello there. Welcome to our uh, Friday demo. Uh, hopefully you all have joined us with no problems. I had a little bit of a scheduling issue uh, with a couple of the emails I think I sent out. I think I put down the wrong date and also at uh, the wrong time. So I really messed things up, but I scheduled uh, the, the live for four o'clock uh, uh, Pacific time. So I think I'm going to stick with that. But uh, Welcome, everybody. We've got a, whole, a lot of people already joining joining us. Uh, Novala is here. Monique is here. And uh, Carla is here. Hey, Carla. LC is here. Tracy. Hey, Tracy. So we've got a bunch of uh, people ready to go. Like, I got some members. Monique had some screen issues. I'm glad you got that uh, sorted out, Monique. I have no idea what could have caused that, but I'm glad you figured it out. Uh, Monique screen flipped upside down. So crazy. So Lori is here. Hey, Lori. And uh, let's see. Anyone else? Jerry is here. Hey, Jerry. And I think Lynn is here. And Vet is here. Hey, Vet. So we've got a whole bunch of people. Um, so today, I think what we're going to do, uh, last week, someone suggested doing uh, like a cloud open cup pour. And that sounded pretty cool. Um, I haven't done one of those before, but uh, I did some tests. I did some test paintings and gave it a try. And I wasn't thrilled with the results of uh, like a cloud open cup. So what I thought I'd try today is a cloud uh, floating cup pour. I've never done one before. I don't know if it's going to work, um, but I'm excited to see <laughs> what we get. So we'll learn something today. Um, uh, worst case, uh, we'll get a cool looking floating cup painting. If it's going to have a lot of cloudy effects, I'm not sure, but we'll give it a try and we'll see what we get. So, hey, Kathy, Chris is here, Kim. Uh, awesome. Well, let's give it a shot and um, see what we got. If, uh, if you have any questions while I'm uh, doing the demo, please throw them in the comments. I'll go back and check them out and answer them. And uh, Sonia has joined us. Hey, Sonia. All right. So let's take a look at the colors we're going to be doing today or using today. And uh, I'm going to be pouring over an old painting. Um, this is an old one I did a while ago. I'm not thrilled with it, so we're just going to cover it up. It's a 16 by 20. And um, so we'll do a floating cup on top and see what we get. And for a 16 by 20, uh, we need 13 ounces of paint, which is quite a bit of paint. So I've got my cup marked and ready to go. This is a 16 ounce cup and I've marked it uh, at 13 ounces. And I've got my uh, floating cup hole in there with my tape tab. Uh, it, might be, it might be hard to see that. So, um, but I always put that in there before I do my, or fill my cup up for the floating, flo uh, floating flip cup. So we got our cup ready to go. I've got a whole bunch of colors. These are all uh, leftover paints. I've got tons of leftover paint, so I thought I'd use some up. And uh, I've got two different types of a kind of a tealy turquoise green. I've got a, a, a metallic blue, which I love that color. A really dark, um, this is a really dark like phthalo blue uh, in a little black, I think. This is kind of a neutralized uh, purple. I've got a like a red violet over here, which is a really pretty red violet color. This is kind of a, like a silvery white color. I've got a, a gold with a little bit of orange in it. So it's kind of a, a really rich kind of reddish gold. And we've got our uh, cloud pour right here. And this is um, my four part cloud mixture. So my four part cloud mix is two parts Floetrol, one part um, satin enamel from Bear, Bear Satin Enamel, the ultra white. One part of the Vallejo uh, Pearl Medium. One part of, uh, I just used uh, the white uh, Artist Loft uh, Flow Acrylic White. So um, so that's my, my four part mix. I'll talk about that again. If you have more questions, I'll show you what I'm using um, for the my cloud mix. Again, I don't know if we're going to get a cloudy uh, effects in this painting, but we'll see what happens. So let's uh, first, and I got my little flipper right here, my little chopper to
to flip my floating cup over. So I think I'm all ready to go. Um, I'm not exactly sure what kind of order I'm going to put these in. I'm just kind of winging it and going to play it by ear and we'll see what, what happens. So I'm going to, I've mixed up a gray base coat. This is just some white and some black together. I'm just going to uh, pour this on, spread it out, and then we'll get started with our uh, layering our cup. I probably should have layered my cup first, but we're doing it this way. Okay, so I'm just spreading this out. I just want a thin, kind of a thin base coat, and then I'm going to put uh, kind of a larger paint puddle in the center. I might use a color actually for um, the center kind of paint puddle. We'll see. So probably put too much paint on here again. I always do that. But uh, that's no problem. You can always take some off, which I'm probably going to do. So I've got some ex excess paint on here. Just kind of push it towards the center. I'm going to grab my cup. And just scoop it off, put it back in. I have still not mastered pouring the exact perfect amount to cover my base coat. <laughs> so <laughs> that looks good. Just spread that out again. And the floating cup, uh, the base coat kind of is incorporated into the into the painting and the composition. I'm not exactly sure why I used a gray with all these uh, bright colors. I got a chunk of something in here, pull that out. But I mixed up a gray and I threw it on here, but I think I've got another chunk of something. I'll pull that out of there. Um, but what I think I'm gonna do is use one of um, these colors here and pour it in the center is kind of a, um, and that's where I'll, I'll flip my cup. Maybe I'll do the, what do I want to do? I'll do the teal color. So I really don't do this very often. I've, um, I've done it once or twice, but so I'm going to be, I'm going to just kind of expand that a little bit. But that's where I'm going to flip my cup and the paints will kind of flow into this teal color. At least we'll see what happens. And let's see. And I've got a question. Uh, Carla is asking, is this a canvas or a board? This one is a canvas, 16 by 20 uh, stretch canvas. So I'm not using a panel uh, tonight. And let's see here. All right. So. I'm going to move this up here so we can layer our cup. So I got my uh, cup. Again, 13 ounces is what we need. I'm going to start with my cloud mix and pour some of that in the bottom. Because that will be the kind of the last color to come out of our cup. I think I'm going to go next. What do I want to do? Maybe I'll go with um, some of the gold. And maybe I'll kind of go from warms to cools. That might be fun. I'll go with some of this pretty red violet. Then maybe I will, I'll put in some of the darker violets. Then I think I'm going to go with uh, like the dark color, the dark blue, and then maybe the lighter blue. And again, these are just all floating layers. Maybe some of this kind of a tealy turquoise color, and then go back to that color I used for our, uh, to put on our canvas. So that's kind of one layer of all the different colors. I think I'm going to uh, put some more cloud mix in there. Whoa, poured it down the backside of my cup <laughs> by accident. Uh, let's see, oh, I didn't use this stuff, the silver. I'll put some of that in there. And maybe some more of the gold. And some of the, I really like that red violet color. Some of the uh, purple. And again, you can kind of layer your cup however you feel like it. I'm just doing kind of the same order, I think. 
and back to our turquoises. Almost out of that stuff. And kind of metallic turquoise. Maybe some more of this um, silver. That would be cool. And then maybe a little more of the, the dark blue. I'm almost right to my line, my 13 ounces. And what else? I need to use the rest of the purple. And a little more of the blue. And there we go. So we've got our 13 ounces. I'm going to wipe up the cloud mix that came spilling over there. All right. So that is it. I'm going to move some of these paints out of the way. And I'll check and see if there's any uh, questions right before I flip the cup. I'll scroll up here really quick. And Judy is asking, um, explain everything. Okay, <laughs> well, I will explain uh, everything I can. All right. And uh, Jerry is asking uh, to repeat the cloud mix. I sure I sure can do that after we're, we flipped it. So, all right. Hey, Judy is new here. Hey, Judy. All right, so let's um, do a flip cup, a floating flip cup. So I'm going to move this out of the way for a moment. I'm going to pull the canvas back. And I've got my little uh, chopper, flipper, helper. So I'm, I've got my big cup of paint. I'm going to put my chopper on top and then flip the whole thing over. This is so much easier than trying to do a old school flip cup right on the canvas. And now I'm going to slide my chopper out and just drop my cup right in my teal puddle of paint. So here we go. There we go. That went pretty good. All right. I'll let that sit there for just a second and I'll wipe off my chopper. Now this is similar to a flip cup, but I've put a, a hole in my cup with a tape tab, just some scotch tape covering a hole that I've poked in the cup right here. And when I pull that tape tab, uh, it's going to let air into the cup and release the paint. And the paint will kind of shoot out into our uh, teal pool that we've created. And the cup will start floating around a little bit, hence the floating cup. Um, it's a super fun technique. It's one of my very favorites. And uh, Let's see what happens. So I'm going to pull my, my tab. There it goes. It's always very fun to see the paint kind of uh, just flow right out from underneath the cup. And we can give it a little hand. I'll let the little, little more paint out. We can kind of float some of the paint down a little bit. And all the paint's out. I'm going to pull the cup away. Ooh, I got a couple little drips. Wow, we got a crazy looking center here. Um, I quite like that. So we could, if we have a really boring center, we could put the cup back over and kind of twirl it through to make some interesting uh, designs to make a little more interest. Um, or you could do a, like a lip drag if you wanted to. Um, I think I'm going to just leave it. I quite like uh, the center we've got. And things are all going to change as we start uh, tilting and stretching the paint. We've got a lot of cells popping up, which is really uh, fun. So I'm going to just uh, put that aside. And let's see here. So time for our tilting process. Uh, we, I'm, I'm hopeful we'll get some interesting cloud effects. It's looking a little cloudy in there, but let's start to stretch it. So go through my tilting process. And first step is to just expand our paint puddle. I just want to cover more of the canvas without going over the edges right away. So that is looking 
Good. I'm going to turn the canvas. Makes it easier to uh, pull the paint down this way. So there we go. Step one is done. We've uh, stretched out our paint puddle. I really like what's happening in here. It's very cool. So next up, we have to tilt over all the edges and corners. And uh, so I'm just going to pick a corner. I think I'll start with this one since there's a lot of paint right here. So just kind of slowly move the paint over there. You can use your fingers to kind of help control the paint. There we go. And then once it kind of goes over the edges, I kind of like to move the paint back into the center again. So we got one. Why don't we go over to this corner next? And you can do this in any order you want. Um, I'm just going to go over here. Just kind of slowly move the paint over, and I like that. I like that goal that we had on the edges. Maybe I can keep a little bit of it. Just kind of move the paint down a little bit. So I think next I'll go over here. We've got a lot of cool lacing and things happening. Uh, it's going to be hard to keep all of this cool stuff right here. Um, maybe I'll try, though. I'm going to go to this corner next instead. This paint is moving uh, rather quickly because this is a little bit thinner mix than a lot of these um, paints were. Um, some of them were like Dutch pour consistency, and I kind of combined a few different paints to get them a little bit thicker, but some of them are a bit thin still. So we went over that corner. So it's moving pretty quick. Okay, so we've got three down, one to go. I'm deciding what I want to do there. I think I'm just going to tilt it off. We're going to lose uh, some of this stuff, but that's just the way it goes sometimes. I think the center of interest is all of this stuff in the middle here, so that's kind of, kind of the focus of our painting. So just slowly move it down there. And we cover that. That looks good. So we've covered all of the corners and all the edges. Now I'm going to, it's kind of time to assess. I'm moving the paint. I just want to move it back kind of towards the center here. So I'm going to just set it down and take a look and see what else I want to do. If anything, and I'm seeing <laughs> every time I, I get rid of all the negative space, I make people sad. I know, but uh, let's see here. I'm just going to check and see if there are any questions. And let's see here. Um, cool. I've, there are some good questions. I'm going to come back to them in a, a second. Um, well, Chris has one. I'll, let's take a look at Chris's question. She says, Brad, your normal mix, uh, three parts flow trial, two parts paint, uh, three parts, or three parts, or two parts medium, I'm sorry, three parts paint plus water 
I've been doing 30 grams Floetrol, 20 grams pouring medium, 30 grams uh, paint plus water if needed. That sounds great, Chris. Yeah, absolutely. Um, absolutely perfect. You know, so you're just using grams instead of, you know, as your part size. And that's perfect. So you're doing it absolutely 100% correct. Um, and that's kind of my, my normal mixture when you're using um, like a pouring medium, like uh, Liquitex pouring medium is what I normally use. And that's exactly right. So great job, Chris. That's awesome. And uh, so let's see here. And Tracy is asking, um, could you have added a bit of paint as flow extender to save that edge? I sure could have, Tracy. Um, and you could all you could always do that if you have a an interesting edge, you know, or negative space that you like. You can use flow extender to um, kind of save that. Um, in that particular case, um, I wasn't I wasn't thrilled with that. It looked interesting, but it wasn't such, it wasn't a very large area. And uh, I didn't want the focus to kind of go down there, but um, you could absolutely do that. So, no, yeah, absolutely. Great question. And I'm not the hugest, um, uh, I like negative space mostly when I'm specifically planning on it. Um, so I, I normally don't keep a lot of negative space in my paintings. That drives a lot of people crazy, but uh, I better get to, uh, tilting here if I want to continue or do anything else with this painting before the paint starts to uh, get funny on me. So I was going to point out what I like here. Um, let's see, I'm going to get rid of this banner thingy just so you can uh, see the whole painting. So what I really like so far about this painting is all the corners are very different. We've got like this very, you know, a, a tealy blue corner down here. We've got kind of more reds and a lot of different colors here. We've got red violets up here, which is very pretty. Um, some interesting cells and things happening up here, um, which I really love. So all the corners look very cool. I always kind of look at the corners, um, you know, for compositional things. We've got this really dynamic, interesting shape with all this white around it, that's our cloud mixture. And we did get some cloudy effects in here, um, especially in the center. So that's really our center of interest and I really like it. Uh, we've got this really big dark band kind of running up through here, um, which I like a lot. I don't think I'm gonna do anything else uh, tilting wise to this. I think I like it just the way it is. I don't think I could um, improve it at all. There's nothing I, um, see that I really don't like and want to tilt off like around the edges. So I'm going to call this one good. Um, and we're getting some small cells popping up, you see, and that is cloud mixture creating those cells. They're, they're very similar to like the pearl cells. Um, and, uh, you can get with the uh, satin enamels. So that's kind of cool. It's like an interesting, like little starbursts kind of popping up throughout the painting. So um, we were getting a lot of uh, kind of overstretching of certain areas like this. Some of these cells are getting a little crazy right here. And that's because of some of these paints uh, were a little thinner than other paints. So when you have um, paints that are not all the same consistency, like a little bit thicker paints, a little bit thinner paints, um, they'll, they'll move in different speeds. So it can kind of... Uh, make your cells look a little funny and wonky. I try to always have the same consistency in all the paints, but you know, these are all leftover paints and this is an experiment. So I wasn't too concerned about that, but normally I try to keep the same consistency in all the paints. I'm not like obsessed with, you know, perfection, just get close enough and you're, and you're in good shape. So um, I really like this one. And I think uh, we did capture some interesting cloudy, effects. Uh, it's kind of glowing right in here. That's kind of typical of the, the cloud pour, um, kind of this airbrushed look, which is very pretty. So I really like the way the way this turned out. I like the colors. 
Uh, we've got some warm and some cool and some light and dark. So it's kind of a well-balanced, fun uh, floating cup painting. A lot of interesting cells happening. So let's see here. So I'm happy with that. So I'm going to check and see um, uh, if there are any uh, questions. And there are. There are. So I'm going to flip my camera back uh, to me. Hello. And uh, I'll see if I can answer your questions for you. Um, I'm going to go back to the top just to see if I missed anything. And if I did miss anything, um, you can always put it in the uh, comments again. So. OK. So forgive me for a moment. And uh, so Jerry's asking for the cloud mixture again. And I'll talk about that in a second. Why don't I talk about that right now? So. Um, the cloud mix this is my four part cloud mixture and uh, it's a little more involved. My easy cloud mix is very simple. It's got uh, three ingredients. My four part has got four ingredients plus a little bit of water, perhaps if you need it. Um, but part one is Floetrol. So um, two parts Floetrol is the first part of the uh, my cloud mix, two parts Floetrol, one part of my bare satin enamels. Um, I put my bare satin enamels in these big squirt bottles. So one part of this, this is the ultra white that I use. You could also use the deep base if you want. Um, ultra white is what I used in this mixture. One part of the Vallejo uh, pearl medium. This is some awesome stuff. I get this at Blick.com. Um, you could probably get this on Amazon, I'm sure. Uh, one part of that, and then one part of the Artist Loft uh, Flow Acrylic. This is actually the soft body stuff, but it's working fine for me, so I use it. Um, and that is our four parts. And I did add a tiny bit of water just to get a little thinner consistency. The consistency I'm looking for is a, a slight mound when the paint drizzles off your stir stick. Um, and, um, and that's it. You don't need a lot of water, by the way, for to add to this. So that is my four-part cloud mixture. And let's see here. Um, I'm going to see if there are any other questions. And it's... Going down here. Thanks for all the great questions. I appreciate that. Uh, or great comments also. Um, let's see here. There is Chris's question. So I'm just trying to catch up here. And so there was the Sadness about the uh, negative space. <laughs> and uh, let's see. And uh, Kim has just commented, I like the suggestion to look at the four corners. It has really helped me with composition. I'm glad that has helped. That's, uh, that's uh, an abstract compositional uh, uh, kind of, it's not really a rule, but like a guideline I learned from another uh, abstract painter who I really like. Um, so I'm glad you like that. And uh, um, cool. OK, so I'm looking for questions. And uh, Mancha is asking, uh, you never torch it. No, I, I rarely torch my paintings. Um, I find it really doesn't do much for me. Um, I, don't, I don't torch to generate cells. Um, I don't think it really works all that well. Um, the only time I do torch is for a very specific technique I use when I'm using a glue-based pouring medium and have a silicone or dimethicone in my paints. Then the torch is really vital and cr critical because that's what kind of brings the cells to life. Um, but that's a very specific technique and reason when I torch. But normally when I'm using a flow trial based 
pouring medium, I never really torch. The only time I would is to, to just pop air bubbles in my base coat. That's pretty much it. So, but there's nothing wrong with torching. You can torch if you like. Um, a lot of people do it. And uh, Susan is asking, uh, would you always use so many colors or is it, or is this part of the flip cup? Uh, this just happens to be a bunch of colors I grabbed. Uh, these are all the kind of leftover paints I had. Um, normally I stick with maybe four to five colors. I had a, I had a bunch of them here. I had, how many did I have? I don't even know. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine colors as a lot. Um, so that's, 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 a. Uh, nine, 10 colors is, is a lot of colors. I don't think you need to mix up all these colors. Um, and some of them are similar. Like the, I had two different teals. Um, I had two different purples. Um, you could have eliminated maybe half of these paints and still gotten something very similar to this. So, um, but I don't always use this many colors. This is just kind of a, a fun experiment just to use up some paint and see what would happen. And, uh, and Jerry is asking, uh, can you use other house paint than bare? I don't know. Um, I use the bare just because it's the satin enamel. Uh, you could also use the DecoArt satin enamel paint. Um, but those are the two that I know of that create like the cloud effects. Uh, you could try other brands if they have a satin enamel. Um, you could try them out. I don't know if they would work. I haven't uh, the bear is very readily available for me, so that's kind of what I stick with. Um, but uh, you could definitely try it. But that's really the only time I use house paint is just for the satin enamel. Um, and the bear is a, lo a lot cheaper than the DecoArt satin enamel. That's why I use it a lot. Um, but I do use the DecoArt satin enamel as well. So, but um, you could always experiment though. Just look for something that says satin enamel on it. Um, and give it a shot. I think uh, Sherwin-Williams, I'm sure, makes one. Um, I'm not sure if you can find one at... And Lowe's has Sherwin-Williams brand paints, so I'm sure they would have one. And uh, Carla is asking, can you use the pearl medium for other things? Um, yeah, you can. Uh, I mean, this is a floating flip cup kind of experiment, and uh, I like what the, what the results we got with it. Uh, you can do cloud pours, like the standard way that we have been doing in the membership, like the straight pours. Um, also, if you thin them down, and uh, you can use them as like a pearl pour technique. And I think that's a, it's a, quite a separate technique because you use the pearl, a very thinned, thinned out version of the pearl medium as a base coat, kind of a, th a thicker base coat on your canvas or panel. And then you use very thin paints uh, and do direct pours on top or ribbons on top and then do some tilting and that will create the pearl cells kind of coming up through and kind of eating the rest of the colors away. Um, it's very similar to, I mean, it's, it's very similar formula, um, but the consistency is different. So, but we'll get into that uh, technique. I think that's, I, I, I look at that as a separate technique because of uh, the paint consistency is quite a bit different and some of the techniques are different. So, but uh, that's, um, I'm sure there are many other ways to use cloud mix that I haven't thought of, but I'm sure other people have thought of. So great question though, Carla. And, uh, and Sharon is asking, um, so do you add medium to house paint? Um, Yes, I mean, for this specific mixture, I mixed this paint right here, this white, and this was, but a very specific house paint. This is the uh, satin enamel house paint, but I also mixed it with, so I mixed that with Floetrol, and I mixed it with the pearl um, pouring medium or pearlescent uh, medium, and I also added more paint. So I used an additional white paint. Um, so I don't use, I don't use uh, house paint for base coats. Um, I don't use house paint and um, add 
you know, just for just for paint, just for pouring other paintings. Um, I always use more uh, like artistic, you know, quality art or paints for most of my paintings and base coats. Um, but this is the very, this is kind of the only time I use a house paint, and it's just to get this very specific um, effect. And there's only a you know small amount of it in my paints. So, the great question though, Sharon. All right. So let me. Um, I'm going to flip it. I'm going. You can take a look at um, the painting again here. And I'm going to grab something quickly, just to show you. I'll be right back. Okay. Okay, so I went and grabbed um, my two different satin enamels. This is the DecoArt satin enamel. Uh, it's uh, DecoArt Americana Decor satin enamel. This is kind of the original product that kind of created the cloud pour and the pearl pours um, by Melody um, several years ago. Um, and it's great, it works really well. Um, the only problem is this is more expensive and sometimes it's very hard to find this stuff, but this works wonderful. And this is the Bear um, Premium Plus, it's called Paint and Primer Interior Satin Enamel. And this is the ultra white. Um, this is what I used uh, in this painting, just one, a small amount um, of this stuff. And this, is, this works really well. So these two products, uh, are what I use for uh, satin enamels to get this cloud, cloudy effect. Um, I just wanted to show you the can, and this is available at Home Depot. This is a Bear is a Home Depot brand product, um, but I'm sure like Sherwin Williams is a big paint supplier in the U.S. Um, Lowe's is a big you know kind of big box you know hardware store, and uh, they carry Sherwin Williams paint. So I'm sure they'd have some kind of a satin enamel version of this that you could try out. And it's probably, you know, I can't guarantee it because I haven't tried it, but it more than likely will work very similar to the bare satin enamel. So I just wanted to show you the, uh, the two different containers. So you kind of had a frame of reference to see what I'm using here. All right. So any other uh, questions that you might have? Um, and, uh, Monique says the Care Bear, that's the, that is our Care Bear paint. That's an inside joke. <laughs> so let's see here. Let's see. Any other questions, um, that you have? Um, I don't see any at the moment. Um, so I guess this is kind of a, kind of a quick one, um, kind of a quick demo, but, um, wanted to give it a try. And I, at the beginning of the video, I mentioned, uh, last week, someone suggested we should do a, uh, like a cloud open cup pour. And I tried some of them, but I didn't love the results I got with the open cup technique, uh, using the cloud pour mix. I did get some, like some smallish. Uh, cloud cells, but it just didn't look kind of the way I wanted. So I thought I'd try this technique out, the floating cup, and this is much, much better. I really like what happened here. Um, and I think it be, I think the difference is uh, we can add the cloud mix to the bottom of the cup, which is what I typically do when we're doing a straight pour or a cloud ring pour. Um, so the the white has a chance to kind of flow, you know, through some of the other colors, and it's on top. Um, with the open cup pour, it's a little bit different. Um, it's a different way of adding colors to your, our painting. It's basically uh, doing direct pour, pouring colors right in a, a small cup, right on the um, 
canvas. So they don't have a chance to kind of blend together uh, or mix in together in the cup. So I thought the floating cup, the floating flip cup might be a better way to incorporate the uh, cloud mix. And I think it worked out awesome. And uh, Jerry is asking, uh, can you tell us the other cloud mixture? Uh, yes, and uh, I have three of them that I use. Uh, I'll tell you the other one, the easy one. Uh, all three of them are in my membership. And so you can print them out. I have sheets you can download and print out with all of the formulas and ingredients and ratios. But um, uh, the easy cloud mix is very simple. It's two parts uh, flood flow trawl. It is uh, one part of the bare sat enamels. And then it is one part of um, like a another white paint. And uh, I like to use like a Craft Smart, like Craft Smart white paint. Um, this works really well. And it creates a little, it's a different effect it creates. And you get a lot more, um, uh, you get a lot more lacing using this, this white in particular. So that's a very simple um, formula. So two parts Floetrol, one part of the bare satin enamel, one part of the Craft Smart white. This happens to be the satin acrylic. You could use matte or satin. Um, this is like a, a cheaper kind of craft paint. Uh, I find this at Michaels. This is a Michaels brand. Um, but, and that works really, really well for a cloud mix. And you don't have to add any water to this mixture. It, the consistency is just how I like it, uh, just with those three ingredients. And it works great. And uh, let's see here. And then Jerry is asking again, can you use the Artist Loft Flow paint instead of the craft? Yes, I'm, you sure could. Um, it, it'll give you a little different look but it'll work very similar. Um, I like using the Craft Smart because I just like that really, uh, all the lacing you can get from it. I'm wondering if um, the paintings behind me, um, this one is very similar. You get all this lacing. This one is a little, uh, it's a little subtle to see, but uh, it looks very similar to that. But you could absolutely use the uh, Flow Acrylic White as well for the easy cloud mix. Great question. Okay. And let's see here. And Susan is asking, uh, what technique are we doing in February? Well, I have not quite uh, decided. I'm, I'm juggling between two, but I think I'm going to keep that secret for a couple days. So, but uh, stay tuned. I will let you know. Um, but it will be a, it'll be a, f a fun one, of course. Um, but I'm still deciding exactly what we want to do for February in the membership. So, all right. Cool. Well, I don't see any other questions. If you have any last minute questions, um, throw them up in the comments. I'll be happy to answer them. And if not, um, we can break and, uh, you could go try out a cloud floating cup pour if you want to. Um, I think you would enjoy it. I really like this one again. Um, and let me, let me flip back really fast here. Um, Cause things have been developing a little bit. We've, our little cells have grown a, a small amount. So these small um, like pearl cells caused by the cloud mixture have grown a little, not like enormously, but it's kind of fun and it's cool. They might develop a little bit more as the painting dries. So, um, but I really like this one. So this is a fun technique because this is, was an experiment. Um, I had not done this before, so I didn't know if it was going to work, but I think I'm going to be doing it uh, more often in the future. So we kind of created our own little new technique because I haven't seen another floating cloud pour flip cup. So. I don't know if that's a, the name I'd use, but um, <laughs> so, but it's a good one. I like it. So I think we got a great one. All right. So let's see here. Let me flip back. 
Okay, so well, I don't see any other questions, but um, let's see here. Oh, Sharon is asking, um, how do I join the membership? Uh, the membership is open. I open it every uh, few months. It's closed right now, um, but um, I'm not. I don't. I don't. I wasn't planning on opening it in February, but if you give me a uh, email, I can see what uh, I can see what you. And if you're really interested in joining, I can send you a link, Sharon, and you could email me, and uh, I can see about if. See if you would want to join. My gosh, <laughs> sorry about that. Um, let's see if I can. Uh, where is my? Um, looking for my um, email, but I don't see it. So, shoot, I don't have it here, but. Um, But you could also, uh, let's see, let me, I'll throw my email in the banner. Let me create it really quick. And if you have any questions, other questions, um, you could always email me. So I'm going to just type in here really fast. Cool. So if you're interested in, in uh, learning more about the membership um, or joining the membership, just send me an email, brad at pouringstudio.com. I'll get back to you um, right away, and uh, uh, we can talk about that. All right. So, cool. And Lori just got here. Hey, Lori. Um And uh, cool. All right. So yeah, Sharon and Sharon, if you email me, I will uh, share that with you. So awesome. All right, cool. And Monique is asking about our Zoom call. I'm working on that uh, as at the moment, uh, Monique. You know, at the end of our call, I said, I'm so happy I didn't, um, nothing blew up. I might have spoken too soon though. So I'm having some issues with the uh, recording but I'm going to, I'm trying to figure it out. So, but I'll get back to you and I'll post it in the membership as soon as possible with our experimental zoom call. So, all right. Well, thanks so much everyone for uh, joining us. Um, this is a fun painting. I really like it. I'm glad you, um, <laughs> I'm glad you enjoyed it. And uh, again, if you have any questions, other questions about the studio or the cloud mix or anything else, feel free to email me. I'll be happy to answer any questions you might have. And uh, next week, we'll do another fun demo. I'm not sure what we'll do yet, but uh, hopefully it'll be just as fun. So have a great uh, weekend. I hope you can do some painting. And uh, I'll talk to you again very soon. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye.